we've grown our fundraising um, results by over 20% compared to last year, and that's in the depths of the recession. And compared to all the other fundraising the RNLI does, um, it's really the only activity that's showing not that just it's sustained in the recession, but we've massively grown. And that's all been about increasing the productivity of our fundraisers. Um, and the way that's been done is by improving our training and coaching. We've been uh, running and doing face-to-face -face fundraising for a number of years and I guess found that our results had kind of plateaued out and aspired to really grow this form of fundraising significantly. Uh, we largely employ students, so each year we're taking on new people. And what we learned was that giving them, um, over a, a relatively short period of time, as much um, head start in terms of the skills and competences they need to uh, work with the public and present the, the charity and our values was one of our real key success factors. We also realised actually we didn't have those capabilities in-house to provide that training uh, and we went to an outside consultancy called Making the Link who um, created for us um, a very specialist training package which we have delivered each year at the start of our fundraising season so that we can literally take people who have never um, fundraised before uh, or never done any kind of sales job before and after two really intense days of training they are um, they've got all the skills they need to start off uh, engaging with the public uh, presenting the charity to uh, to the public what uh, what we want of them, getting over um, objections, you know, learning those kind of key, key skills. You know, <clears throat> we, we use the phrase emotional intelligence. It's all about understanding how to speak to people, interact with people, everything from your body language um, to what you say, uh, listening intently to what's being said back so that the end result is a really happy member of the public that's, that's, uh, that's prepared to support the charity. So this is not about being aggressive. We don't want any of those kind of negative connotations um, with how some charities appear to come across. This was all about really um, building long-term engagement with supporters who want to support the charity um, year after year. Okay, so what we're gonna be exploring is the impact of how we feel on what we think how that has a, an impact on our behaviour and how ultimately that has an impact on result. So we'll be exploring the relationship between these four things uh, and seeing how we can improve as leaders and managers to make sure we're providing the right conditions so that people feel empowered, significant, competent, likeable and in control of their result. Um, so it has a big impact on their thinking. Now the thing is with this spiral, if I'm feeling a little bit negative or a little bit got out of bed the wrong side, that has an impact on my thinking. So I start to think more negative things. Funnily enough, we start to think about more negative things and it changes our behaviour at a cellular level. The way we respond to different stimuli will change because we're thinking negative things. Therefore, our behaviours tend not to be as effective as they could be. Therefore, it has a big impact on our result. So, what I'm exploring today is how as leaders and managers and coaches we can leave people feeling positive, thinking that they can do it, that they are significant, that they are competent and likeable. So we've got feelings of inclusion, competence and control of our own destiny. At a cellular level we behave differently. Actually what happens is people engage, people work a little bit harder, they respond differently to different stimuli, particularly when things aren't going well, they bounce back and they deliver exceptional levels of performance, which ultimately has a big impact on the final result that we achieve. Now, as team leaders and managers or leaders in any business or organisation, I think the key role here is to understand the link between feeling and thinking 
and that we, as leaders and managers of a group, can have a big impact between these two to ensure people are feeling engaged, committed, um, significant and competent and in control of what they're doing. Um, there are a number of interventions that we can use here to change the way we're feeling. And that's what we're going to be exploring today, looking at the impact of that on the overall result. So if you're interested in any of this stuff, um, it's how the mind works. It's emotional intelligence at work. Uh, it really is thinking at a strategic level about what we can do as leaders and managers to ensure we get the results that we're looking for. Indeed, even better than the, the results that we're looking for on a consistent basis. My name's Mike, Mike Ponting from Making the Link. If you'd like to find out a little bit more about some of the emotional intelligence tools that we have, have a look at the website. It's makingthelink.co.uk.